People throw the phrase once in a lifetime around pretty liberally. However, there are events that are truly rare enough to occur once in a lifetime, depending of course on how long a person lives and where or when one happens to live. Some occur predictably, while other rare phenomena happen without much warning at all. Either way, we don't want to miss a thing. Thank goodness we have videos like these to fill in the blanks. Consider this your lucky day. 15 Rare Events You'd Be Lucky To See Once In Your Life Part 2 <laughs> Biggest Whale Heart Picture in your mind a 10-story tall animal walking down the street and you probably start seeing images of Godzilla or King Kong. But if you imagine it as a marine mammal and place it on its side, swimming, now you've got a blue whale. They say a blue whale's heart is as big as a car with an aorta large enough for a human to swim through. But as you can see, that's not entirely true. But it's still huge. To give you some perspective, a blue whale's heart weighs almost 640 times as much as a human heart. And they're the largest animals ever known to have lived on Earth. These magnificent marine mammals rule the oceans at up to 100 feet long and upwards of 200 tons. Their tongues alone can weigh as much as an elephant, but finding blue whales' hearts intact is rare. So when a dead blue whale washed ashore in Canada, experts saw an opportunity. They had to get the chest cavity open to expose the people to push the heart out through a window they had made between the ribs and the side of the chest cavity. Not your typical work day for sure, but at almost 400 pounds, it was still hefty. It took four people to move it, and the team used about 1,000 gallons of formaldehyde, which stops tissue from decomposing any further, to begin the preservation process. <laughs> Emoji Python With this particular snake, called a lavender albino piebald ball python, or dreamsicle python for short, many are drawn to its bright golden yellow and white color combination. But for emoji lovers, this particular snake is the serpent for you, although it might be too late. A snake breeder in Georgia sold it for $6,000 with the shape of three smiley faces on its body. But don't fret, every so often breeders will notice a snake with a smiley face in its markings, but it happens very randomly. But this particular animal that made the news happened to have three of them on it, which is just astronomically rare. These snakes are a python species native to West Africa and the most common python that's kept as a pet. They usually grow to about 5 feet long and 10 to 15 pounds. Over the course of the last few decades, snake lovers have found quite a few in the wild that look different for one reason or another. Either natural selection or mutations occur. So breeders bring them into captivity and reproduce the unique look that actually happened naturally. They're able to create snakes that would never occur in the wild because the animals would be unable to find each other because of the randomness of natural selection. And we get slimy-faced pythons like this. <laughs> Climbing Niagara Falls Niagara Falls is a geological wonder, and this is one of the most famous waterfalls in the world. Straddling the border between the United States and Canada, it's been a popular tourist attraction for over 200 years, as well as a major source of hydroelectric power. These waterfalls combine to produce the highest flow rate of any waterfall on Earth, over a vertical drop of over 165 feet. And that's why internationally renowned ice climber Will Gadd took ice climbing to an entirely new level by scaling an ice line up to the left side of it and the largest of Niagara's three sections. He's traveled to the ends of the world to find the world's most challenging climbs, but Niagara Falls, one of the world's most iconic landmarks, was a lifelong mission. After working with the local parks department and law officials, this ice climbing whiz and his team were able to create a comprehensive plan to ensure the climb could be done safely and the necessary precautions were taken to protect the natural environment. You see, he had been waiting quite a while for conditions to be right to ascend the landmark. Although the falls didn't freeze completely, a climbable line on the American side of the falls materialized, and total ice climbing domination was achieved. <laughs> stingray giving birth Today's your lucky day. Ever seen a stingray having babies? Stingrays prefer shallow, near-shore waters in warm parts of the world. Here, they spend most of their time lying partially buried on the ocean floor, hiding from predators, like sharks, or waiting for prey to swim by. 
and that's why they often end up on the fishing lines of fishing enthusiasts in these regions. The crazy thing is, some of these stingray catches are pregnant females, as you can see. Apparently, if they're close to giving birth and have a stressful fight, it can cause them to go into labor. The mother then gives birth to live young, and darn it, the babies are cute. These little stingrays come out with their trademark smiling face. Many people have taken videos of stingrays giving birth. In the videos, one can see the young stingrays coming out with their wings somewhat folded and then unfurling when they enter the water. Baby stingrays are called pups. A female will give birth to 5 to 13 live pups in a litter. The babies look like many versions of their parents, and they're born with the ability to feed and defend themselves. After birth, most juvenile stingrays swim away to start their lives away from their parents. Hopefully, these fishermen gave them a helping hand after the ordeal. <laughs> Meeting a Golden Tiger In the Indian subcontinent, tigers inhabit tropical moist evergreen forests, dry forests, moist deciduous forests, mangroves, temperate upland forests, and alluvial grasslands. But this particular large cat is more of a unicorn than a regular tiger and you won't find it in the wild. This golden tabby tiger is one special cat with an extremely rare color variation caused by a recessive gene that is currently only found in captive tigers. Like the white tiger, it's not a separate species. They're a breed of Bengal tigers. Their unique coloring is actually a genetic mutation from recessive genes. The golden tiger's white coat and gold patches make it stand out from the rest, for sure. Their striping is much paler than usual and may fade into spots or large prominent patches. These tigers also tend to be larger and, due to the effect of the gene on their hair shaft, have softer fur than their orange relatives. You can almost see their soft fluffiness. While no official name has been designated for the color, it's sometimes referred to as the strawberry tiger due to the strawberry blonde coloration. And there are currently believed to be fewer than 30 of these rare tigers in the world. <laughs> Song in the Sand Have you ever heard the song in the sand? No, it's not the latest dance challenge on TikTok or the latest banger climbing up the music charts. Sometimes known as baking sand or whistling sand, it's sand that's capable of producing sound. But for sand to sing, there are certain conditions that have to be met. First, the grains of sand have to be round and have a particular size. Secondly, the sand has to meet the humidity conditions necessary. Third, it must contain silica, a very common mineral. In order for the sounds to be heard, visitors must simply walk across the sand. What causes singing sands? The generation of the noise is unclear, but one theory states that the noise is produced by friction between the sand particles. Another theory states that air compressed between the particles may be the source of sound, while others have attributed it to electrostatics. In the case of sand dunes that sing, the sound produced is more of a roar or a boom than a song. These loud sounds produced have come to be known as the Song of Dunes. For beaches, the sound may also be described as a squeak, a whistle, or other soft noises. But lucky for us, there are 33 known beaches that sing. <coughs> Frozen House Although it looks like the lakefront properties inhabited by the White Walkers from the Game of Thrones, it's hard to imagine this scenario wasn't entirely computer generated. It's that unreal. But trust us, it is. Welcome to life along the Great Lakes. Strong winds and freezing temperatures left houses in certain areas completely covered in ice. And that's an understatement. Incredible storms brought gale force winds and almost 20 foot waves off some of the shorelines. And as you can see, houses were left looking like they were stuck in a new ice age. People living on the East Coast over Lake Erie in New York can't believe what they're going through, which encased their homes in one to three inch thick ice. It looks fake, it looks unreal, a local resident told the press. It's dark on the inside of my house. It can be a little eerie, a little frightening. We get it, and the icing of these homes happen in less than 24 hours in some cases. Specifically for the lake shore, the big problem was that the lake was not frozen over, which allowed waves to crash on shore. So these ice homes developed as lake water continuously crashed on the shore, carried by winds gusting up to 55 miles per hour with temperatures well below freezing, allowing for ice to develop in a mass along the shoreline. <laughs> Haboobs They can be massive and like something out of a Hollywood disaster flick, like the mummy when the evil curses of the Egyptian undead overcomes a city. But it's not. 
They're called haboobs. It's a dust storm on steroids. It's true, however, that sand and debris reach miles into the sky and leave up to a foot of sand in its path. But did you know they can even happen in space? Mega dust storms on the planet Mars have been compared to haboobs on Earth. Here's how they happen. During certain months in arid, dry parts of the world, the monsoonal flow can provide heavy rains. If storms develop away from a dry area, it cools the air and accelerates into the surface. These downward winds strike the desert valley floors. Dust gets picked up into the air and is pushed in the direction the winds are traveling. A region will get hammered by severe weather, and these storms then collapse, sending out an incredible haboob that looks like the end of days. But it's a type of intense dust storm carried on a weather front, and believe it or not, they occur throughout the world. They've been observed in the Sahara, across the Arabian Peninsula, North Africa, the deserts of Central Australia, China, and the U.S. They frequently occur in the deserts of Arizona, in New Mexico, in Eastern California, and in Texas. <laughs> The Underwater Park One look at this next footage you might ask yourself, where are the mermaids? Isn't this where they live? Set among the snowy mountains in Austria, the watery oasis is normally only three feet deep. It's called Green Lake, and for most of the year, visitors to this beauty spot can leisurely stroll around the picturesque lagoon from one of the benches set near the water's edge. The lake is surrounded by the snowed peaks of the mountains and forests that create a place of fantastic beauty perfect for hiking and mountain adventures. However, the summer here is a completely different story. The snow from the peaks starts to melt and fresh water floods the valley. Around 30 feet of water covers trees, footpaths, benches, and bridges. It goes from 21,000 square feet of water to over double that. But that's not the only reason why we're sharing this unique location. Green Lake was considered to be one of the most exotic waters to dive in around Europe. As you can see, due to a rare natural phenomenon, and this happens every year. However, recent regulations forbid scuba diving and exploring the underwater ecosystem. But wouldn't you just love to dive in? <laughs> Belugas adopt a narwhal. White whales are very social. Groups are called pods, which may have hundreds to thousands of whales. They communicate with one another with sounds like clicks, moos, whistles, and clangs, but do they speak narwhal? Turns out, yes, sort of. Every year, a group of researchers head down to St. Lawrence River in the Canadian province of Quebec to study the beluga whales that travel through. Recently, they saw something strange, a juvenile narwhal that appeared to have been adopted by the pod. Narwhals generally live in the Arctic waters of Canada, Norway, Greenland, and Russia. So for them to be in Canada with a beluga pod was a little weird, but also very special. This lost narwhal was hundreds of miles from home, and according to researchers, he was doing just fine. Like narwhals, beluga whales are primarily found in the Arctic. The ones that travel up to St. Lawrence River, however, are a little different. This is the third year in a row the young narwhal has been seen with a pod, leading researchers to believe that it's well and truly been adopted by the group. We could learn a lot from these beluga narwhal buddies. <laughs> Shark in a Volcano This shocking discovery was made at the Solomon Islands Kavachi Volcano, one of the most active submarine volcanoes in the Southwest Pacific Ocean. Scientists were stunned to find not just life, but large carnivores circling its turbulent base. After dropping video cameras, bait, and lights into the deep sea as part of their volcano work. And several species of sharks make regular appearances here in one of the world's most active submarine volcanoes. The main peak of the volcano, called Kavachi, was not erupting during their expedition, so they were able to drop instruments, including a deep-sea camera, into the crater. The footage revealed hammerheads and silky sharks living inside, seemingly unaffected by the hostile temperatures and acidity. In fact, they encountered a surprising amount of sea life, including the rarely filmed Pacific sleeper shark. The idea of there being large animals like sharks hanging out and living inside this volcano is crazy, and it conflicts with what experts knew about the volcano, which is that it erupts. Exactly why sharks find these waters in Papua New Guinea inhabitable remains one of the world's enduring marine mysteries ever. But scientists believe the sharks must have developed mutations that let them thrive in this volatile environment. <laughs> Brood X The bugs are coming! Billions of them, the periodical cicada emergence. 
While their emergence occurs every 17 years and is no reason for fear, experts worry climate change is spurring them to mature faster. And like clockwork, after 17 years underground, they came. Red-eyed cicadas crawled their way out of their hiding places to the surface and portions of the United States. The insects, known as Brood X, emerged from the Earth in 15 eastern states, from Georgia to New York and west to Indiana and Illinois. They hatch as soil temperatures move closer to 64 degrees Fahrenheit, the trigger for trillions of insects to push up to the surface. They tunnel upwards in mass to emerge from the surface of the ground. They then shed their exoskeletons on trees and other surfaces, thus becoming adults, flying, mating, laying eggs, and then dying within several weeks. So in some areas, there were 1.5 million cicadas per acre emerging from the ground. The mass mating lasts at least three to four weeks. Soon after, the newly hatched nymphs crawl to the edge of the tree branches where the females laid their eggs, drop to the ground, and burrow in for the next 17 years. And the cycle begins again, the brood egg circle of life. Iguana rain. Meteorologists warned of temperatures dropping down into the 30 and 40 degree Fahrenheit range in Florida recently, which, as we all know, is not normal, but the National Weather Service forecast didn't stop there. It also cautioned residents to watch out for iguana rain. Yeah, you heard that right. Large green lizards falling from the treetops. Yep, iguanas can freeze once temperatures dip, but they're not dead. The reason why the lizards have such a hard time in winter is that their bodies aren't adapted to it. They slow down as temperatures drop, eventually becoming immobile and losing their grip on the trees they live in. The iguanas do keep breathing and their main body functions still work. It's their body's way of protecting them until the temperatures warm back up. And as predicted, temperatures dropped as did a large number of reptiles. They can be a danger if they just fall from a tree onto cars or even onto people. Don't forget, they aren't at all small creatures. An adult male iguana can grow up to five feet long. But people in Florida aren't too worried as it's something that happens most winters. The cold snap didn't last long and the iguanas recovered nicely. Snowstorm on the beach. Who knew they had beaches in Siberia? It's known the world over for its ice, but ice storms of this intensity are rare in summer when temperatures are similar to Mediterranean resorts. Not on this day. It seems like the weather decided to punish these folks who were soaking up some rays. Suddenly in late afternoon, heavy winds hit the sandy beach between two bridges across the Ob River, the fifth longest in the world. Swimmers waded out of the water, covering their heads. Footage shows sunbathers and swimmers fleeing their towels and the water to seek shelter from the freak storm, which saw the wind whip up and hot temperatures suddenly drop. Towels, beach mats, and personal possessions were sent flying by heavy winds as the hailstones pummeled bathers and the beach. People shielded themselves under parasols and blow up sunbeds to stay clear of the storm. They were sheltering under the trees as the icy bombardment struck the beach vicinity. It was like being hit by raining bullets from the sky, said one sunbather. People can be heard shouting as the relentless storm seems never ending, but there were no reported injuries on the beach. However, the grassy areas near the beach were left covered in a white sheen of hail after the storm, which lasted a matter of minutes. Overnight Oasis This body of water is near the town of Gafsfa in southern Tunisia. It was formed in 2003 by the natural flooding of a former phosphate quarry, but it only became popular when the rumor of its mysterious appearance started to spread through the region. It's known locally as a miraculous lake because it literally appeared overnight. The origin of formation of the lake is not clear. However, swimming here is risky for three reasons. First, the water of the lake could be contaminated with phosphates. You know, the compounds used to manufacture anything from fertilizers, pesticides, and detergents. In other words, all the dangerous stuff you shouldn't really be exposed to in large quantities. Second, experts have warned that the overnight oasis could be formed because of a rupture in the water table. The cracks from which the water came could reverse and flow the other way, dragging swimmers with it. Third, it's become intensified with green algae, meaning the water is stagnant and conducive to diseases. But that didn't stop anyone from taking a dip. The site is certainly stunning, and there are many large rocks perfect for diving. People flock here to swim and cool off from the region's stifling heat. Don't you feel lucky? We gotta admit, we're a better person now with our minds blown. Wouldn't you agree? 
like and subscribe if you do, and share the video.